Welcome to Bite Size Green, where a healthy body, a healthy planet, and delicious food are all on the same menu. We're delighted to have chef and author Laura Steck as our guest. Join us as we talk about local farmers markets and have Chef Laura show us how to make honey sparklers and other cool cuisine. She'll also talk to us about how our food choices can help reduce global warming. Welcome, Laura, to the show. Thank you, thank you. It's nice to be here. Thank you so much for coming. You're a chef with over 25 years of experience, and you're also a very active environmental advocate. Uh, you've managed to combine the two and are at the forefront of an emerging food revolution that prioritizes health, great tasting food, and the planet. Can you tell me about how you brought that all together in your work? Oh, lovely. Well, I think my passion has always been about the connection between food and the environment. Uh, one of the most positive effects we can have on the environment begins on our dinner plate. And that can extend out to local farmly farms and organics and seasonal. But we're also finding out that the food system can actually have more of an effect. Or if we change our eating habits, we can actually have more of, a, more of an effect or equal effect to um, on global warming than we can depending on if we change our car. So what we eat is very powerful, and in the book that we just wrote, we try to show people how they can work toward reducing global warming and end up with a better food, better food and tastier food and healthier food, too. And that's what speaks to my stomach, better tasting food. And one of the um, ideas that you present in the book is about lo eating locally, organically, and seasonally. Um, why is that important? Well, uh, certainly uh, locally is important because they say the average food on our dinner plate travels 1,500 miles to get there. Uh, wow. If we eat seasonally, it obviously can help reduce the amount of uh, travel that our food goes through. Mm -hmm. And organic, of course, not only uh, eliminating the pesticides and the herbicides from your body, but then from uh, the planet. So both situations leaving us uh, healthier food, healthier planet, healthier body. And it's important for people to know that the, the six main ways that food can affect global warming are um, livestock and synthetic nitrogen-based fertilizers, uh, growing food in greenhouses that's, that are powered by electricity, uh, food waste, not using food waste, uh, uh, the amount of travel that you and I, the, the distance that you and I travel to the grocery store. So these items are all add up uh, to how food affects global warming and we can do the opposite and help to solve the problem. I see, and in California, we're very lucky to have local farmers markets where we can have mm -hmm. access to local, seasonal, and organic food. And mm -hmm. since we can't go to the market, we thought we'd bring in a video of the market in Mountain View last Sunday. Oh, it looks great. Definitely good things. Uh, some, or I think that's citrus, citrus in season now, broccoli romanesco, an excellent food for the winter time. Winter greens, really good, hearty uh, foods. Just moving into art artichoke season now. It's a little early and certainly the root vegetables are what we're looking at now. They're growing, the uh, potatoes are still growing. Uh, the sweet potatoes, of course, are already been harvested. Uh, apples have already been harvested, so they're all in co cold storage too. Uh, kiwis are in season right now as far as fruits go and uh, grapefruits and oranges are also in season. People are having a good time. Everybody's always happy at the farmers markets. I don't know if you've noticed, everyone walks around with a smile. It's, yes. uh, you don't find bad uh, people that aren't in a good mood at the farmers market. It's, That's uh, right. it's a great place to go. It's a great place to support local business. I feel like I'm just so much closer to nature when I'm at the market. It's yeah. And the food you buy there lasts longer. Mm -hmm. Actually last longer than what you get in the store. And uh, we have some of the produce from last Sunday's market here. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, we can look at a little bit. So, so broccoli romanesco is great uh, as a cruciferous vegetable or as a weapon. Right? Yeah, no, it looks no, pretty no. scary. It's pretty crazy looking, isn't it? Something from another planet. But it's like it's a cauliflower beautiful. and a broccoli. And you can cut it uh, just like cauliflower and broccoli. And actually, this part here, when you use the uh, the vegetable, this part that you would normally throw away is what makes great soup stock. Ah. So definitely don't throw this away. We want to either put this in some water and make soup stock with the stuff that we're not using, or we want to put it in the freezer and save it till we have enough. Wonderful. So dinosaur kale. kale. Uh, the best thing to do with these types of greens, we've got chard, is when you're making your pasta, you can uh, 
simply in the last few minutes of cooking, you can put your greens into the pasta water. Just cut them in bite-sized pieces and put your greens into the water and then uh, they cook right away and then you just put your pasta sauce over it. So people say they don't know what to do with greens, but that's an easy thing to do with it. Yeah, it's a nice rich color. Absolutely. Beets. Beets are always in season in California, for heaven's sakes. It's amazing. Beets are always in season. And uh, the best way to cook them is actually to roast them in the oven. It's fast and quick. People don't like to cook beets because they think it takes too long. Mm -hmm. But I swear, beets are one of the easiest things that you can actually cook in the kitchen. You just simply put some olive oil, rub it on the beet after it's cleaned. Uh, you can put it in a glass covered container. You can wrap it up with foil. And oh. then you just let it bake for about an hour. And... Um, High vibe. Beets are high vibe. <laughs> we call it high vibe. And I also like what you say about Mother Nature telling us uh, what Mother Nature says with root vegetables in the winter. Absolutely. Well, Mother Nature gives us little hints on wh what to eat. And so uh, if you want to find out what to eat, you can take the, uh, the drop it on the floor test. <laughs> and if it goes splat, then that means that it's a spring or a summer fruit, most like a spring or a summer uh, vegetable, such as a tomato or mm -hmm. uh, strawberries or um, peaches, things like this. Mm -hmm. And if, it, if you drop it and it goes thud, that means that it is a winter vegetable or fall vegetable. And Mother Nature actually kind of gives us a little hint by saying that the things that grow in the fall and the winter, we actually need a little heat. Uh, a little more heat mm -hmm. to cook them. And it's not necessarily hot heat that we need, but actually energetics of cooking, the, the power, the fire that goes into turning this vegetable into something that you can eat. And mm. um, that looks at some of the concepts of macrobiotics and the energetics of cooking, which is a really exciting uh, way of looking at food and eating and something we explore in the book. Very nice. The energetics, not just the heat. Yeah, the energy, the chi, the ki, the prana, what we don't have a, really a word for in this country. But it's more than, eating is more than just taking in antioxidants and phytochemicals and vitamins and minerals. Eating has to do with a whole, a whole system of mind, body, spirit, of feeding our stomachs as well as our heads and our hearts. And uh, when it comes to food, we want to look at food as being alive. And the more, the fresher it is, the more, mm -hmm. the more energy it has. We know that because the longer food stays out, it starts to wilt and actually loses some energy. So we're going for fresh food. We're going for seasonal food. We're going for local food because it's the nearest to us. And if it's in season, then it's, um, then it is the freshest it's going to be. And that's what we want to take in. We want to take in that energy into our bodies. And I like the way you talk about uh, improving our relationship with food. Yes, well, I think that um, we don't have much of a relationship <laughs> in, the, in the United States with food because we've always, it's always been about, geez, again, it's been about our stomachs and it's been about something that can happen really quickly. And we don't, um, we don't really think about where our food comes from and who grows it. And when we do that, when we, when we take a piece of cheese and we don't know anything about that cheese, we eat it and we don't even think it. But if we actually know the cow that, uh, or the farm that that cheese came from, the cow that gave us the milk, mm -hmm. when we eat that cheese, all of, a sudden, uh, all of a sudden we start thinking about how the cows are, about how the farmer is, the weather, and we have a relationship with it. And so it becomes a much richer piece of cheese. The only thing we care about in life are things that we have relationships with. If we have no relationship with our food and the people who grow it, we won't care about it and we're not going to become satisfied. Two-thirds of us are overweight, for heaven's sakes. Three-quarters of us quickly moving, too. So we need to develop that relationship with food so that we get more out of what eating is really about. After the break, um, we will be back with chef and author Laura Steck and some of her cool cuisine. Stay with us. Thank you very much, Laura, for joining us and sharing your insights and knowledge and your cooking know-how. One of the most positive effects we can have on the environment begins on your dinner plate. Together we can make a great meal and a great difference. Cheers to that. Thanks Cheers. for watching Bite Size Green. See you next time.